Alright, welcome back to ANI 150. This is Lauren Kimball, and we're going to get started on modeling the vehicle. So there are a couple of ways you could go about this. Intuitively, from what we've done in class, usually starting with the simplest shape and going from there is usually the recommended course of action. But what's unique about vehicles are these wheel wells here. So it's not so much that we're just dealing with a couple of cubes, we're also dealing with this rounded shape. And for a few of you who did more intricate weapons during the weapons assignment, you know it can be a real pain in the butt putting in rounded surfaces into an object, utilizing booleans, utilizing um, whatever method you want. Uh, I like to just, and you'll find a lot of people who model cars like to start off with the wheel well to avoid this. So what I'm going to do is create a cylinder. I'm going to rotate it about 90, de 90 degrees. I'm going to lower its subdivision count to something a little more manageable. Uh, something like 12. 12 will work. Alright, so I'm going to move this over to match my wheel well. Now to see the image through the object, you just go into shading, x-ray. And I'm going to scale this up so that it matches that wheel well. Maybe about there. Maybe a, maybe a little bit higher. Maybe over that mud flap protective piece. Yeah, let's just you know, put it about there. All right. Next, I'm going to get rid of these end caps, just delete them, and I might as well delete this bottom portion here as well. So you can see what I'm doing. I just basically have a half a cylinder. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these faces here, and I'm going to click on spacebar, mesh display, and I'm going to reverse the normals, because if we are looking at a wheel well, um, we're not going to be seeing this outer part, so I'm going to switch which side the normals are facing. Then, I'm going to go ahead and grab this edge. And I'm going to shift right click extrude edge. Just give me something to sort of start with. And I'm going to grab this bottom portion, kind of snap it using the V key and moving only on the Y axis, I can snap it to match this vertice over here and then move it to kind of match my reference image. Maybe do the same over here. Grab my V and snap it on the Z axis so it lines up there. This one I'll snap over the same way and then move it to where the sidewall meets the roof. Grab this, hold down my V key so it snaps and matches the coordinate over here. And snap this up and move it over, maybe to where the door is. Snap this over and snap this over as well as down. So now we've got the side of our vehicle and we don't have to worry about how we're going to trim and cut it up for a wheel well. I can also go into my front view, ooh, sorry, go into my front view and move this so that it aligns with the reference image. Cool. Now I don't need a wheel well quite this deep, so I'm just going to push it in a little bit. All right. Now I'm going to go to my top view. Well, eventually, I'm going to go into edge mode on my perspective view and then go to my top view. I'm going to shift right click extrude edge. And I'm going to hold down my X key, which as you can see up here, activates the snap to grid. And just snap it so that it hits that middle, that middle grid. So I intend to mirror over that um, world coordinate. Okay, cool. Okay, sorry for the sporadic cuts. Occasionally my dogs start barking. I have to interrupt the recording. <clears throat> anyway, uh, I think we were left off on um, 
oh yeah, looking up the references. So taking references into account while I'm working. Uh, let's look at what we got here. So we can kind of get an idea from the main image that, you know, the main reference that there's some roundness to the top of the hood, but it can be really helpful to look at it in a three quarters view. It can be really helpful to see it from above and down just to kind of get an idea of how steep that is. And uh, keeping that in mind, I'm going to also try very hard to keep this simple at this stage and not involve a lot of bevels just yet and a lot of roundness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these edges, extrude them, and I'm going to snap them here, merge vertices. And I'm going to see what happens if I grab the face and just extrude it. Now mind you, if you do extrude this way, it's going to create extra faces, but I can go back and fix those later. I just like um, seeing what I can get done with just one plane. Squeeze that in a little bit, bring it up. Line it up as much as possible. There we go. So it's not perfect, clearly. There's, there's a lot more roundness involved um, in the main mesh. But for right now, this is helpful because when you're, when you're basically roughing out the, the shape, you want to try to keep it as simple as possible so you don't get lost in all the little details. So for right now, I'm just trying to keep this as simple as possible. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to delete these extra faces that came from extruding. Something you got to keep in mind whenever you extrude a face is that there's going to be extra faces created around the edges of the face you extrude. All right, so I'm going to look over here and I see that we are going to start dipping down. Um, I could bring this up further until the dip starts, but I want to stop right where the doorway happens. And again, this is also going to be a good opportunity to jump back on those references because unlike the blueprints, we can't see how that door is actually going to dip in. And it looks like it just kind of angles in, maybe bevels in a little bit. It definitely is dipping inward. So I'm going to start with the roof. I'm going to grab the uh, top portion. And I can also go in and grab these vertices on this side and maybe round it off just a little, just add a little bit of a roundness there. Not a lot yet. That'll come later. But I do note that this does not have at any point really a flat top. So that's why <clears throat> I'm tweaking those vertices. I'm going to grab this edge and I'm going to go ahead and extrude. And I'm going to bring it straight down to here. Now it's not it's not really following the, the nice curve that's happening here, but again, we're trying to keep this as rough as possible to start with. All right, and then I could grab this face. And maybe extrude again and go down. There's G and that again. Now I want to stop at this point here because I want to make sure that everything is looking good in the other viewports. Now as we've seen from the reference images, this particular vehicle slants inward toward the front. And we can see that in the top view it is not quite matching. That's why it's important to make these adjustments. And since we only added a few extra edges, it is way easier to make these changes than if I had like a dozen um, edges trying to round off that top to make this shape happen. And I'm going to grab these vertices and make sure that I'm snapping them to grid by holding down the X while I snap. That way when I'm ready to mirror it will mirror cleanly. There we go. It's looking good. I don't want to go through and double check. I'll double check those later. All right. Cool. So I'm going to grab this edge here and I'm going to at first just keep this as similar to the reference as possible because that door is also going to want to match the pushing inward 
So I'm going to go in and add the details in just a little bit, but for right now, just ask it to follow along with the shape. Cool. Open that up just a bit. Sweet. I'm not going to adjust anything just yet. I'm not going to combine until I get a little bit better feel for where I'm going. Um, I definitely want to make sure that I account for this edge as well. So when I'm extruding, I'm going to go ahead and make it a straight line for now, but I'm going to go in and add some edge loops here in a second to help keep this um, this angled inward while also accounting for um, this nice ridge here with the wheel well. All right, so coming back over here, at my door, I think I'm gonna go ahead and go into uh, object mode, which is F8. I'm gonna shift right click and go to my multi-cut tool. All right, it's having a hard time understanding what I want because the faces aren't combined there. Hmm. Cool. All right, so if you select the faces you want to cut, it'll know exactly where you want to put it. But I'm just cutting a direct line. Oh, silly Maya. Let's go ahead and shift right click and delete edge. There. I'm going to go ahead and take this and bring it inward a little bit. Looks like it wants to go in about that far based on the reference because I see the edge of the door. Cool. And if I were to, as it so happens, merge these vertices here, and I go ahead and fill this in, it's going to make a four-sided face. So I could just go over to my modeling toolkit and click on bridge. I mean, I'm going to want to clean this up a little bit more, but it's kind of cool that it made a nice clean quad. Uh, a little bit... Um, angled a little bit funny though. So I'm going to go ahead and help Maya out and just do that for now. Eventually I'm going to want to go in and break that up because I'm going to have more edge loops up here to round off the top and then I can connect that in cleanly. But for right now I might just leave it. Um, I get a little annoyed from time to time when faces develop this weird shading that's caused by normals. So I'm going to just uh, shift right click and soften harden so that it stops doing that. It drives me nuts and get back to this. So this is a nice clean quad right here as well. So I'm just going to go edge, edge, bridge, edge, edge, bridge. And now I'm going to start focusing on this wheel well. So using my, uh, first I'm going to grab this vertice here and bring it up right above that mud flap. And then I'm going to start using my poly cut tool or my multi cut tool. Um, just uh, hold down shift, drag it straight down. Oh, I forgot to merge that vertice first. Shift right click, merge vertices. And multi cut tool. Hmm, it did not. What is going on? No, it's fine. It's not wanting to cut that face for some reason. Let's try going into selection mode and just grab these faces and maybe the multi-cut tool will behave. There it goes. Okay, so I'm going to there. Maybe one here. Maybe one here. So it starts to dip down. Maybe one here. I could have used my insert edge loop tool. That would have been a good option too. If you want to do it more that way, then what I would be needing to do is go into object mode, shift right click, insert edge loop tool, and I think that was like four or five divisions. But you want to turn on, here let me reset the tool, you want to go to multiple edge loops, set up the number of edge loops you want, which I think it was four. That looks about right. And then it kind of gives you a nice equal distance, makes for some nice looking geometry. So when I have that done, I'm just going to grab these vertices and move them so that they match the reference image. And 
It needs a little bit more work right in here, but that is very doable. I can add another edge loop. In fact, I will. I'm just going to my multi-cut. It's doing that thing again. I think it has to do with the fact I have faces selected. Whatever the reason. Um, if I... If I use the multi-cut tool, unfortunately, it does make a straight line, but it doesn't really conform nicely with the geometry. So let's try that insert edge loop tool anyway. Go back in, set it to one loop. Pew! There we go. I can bring that down like so. Snap it down. All right, and that will allow me to create another wheel well. I can obviously extrude this downward. Um, yeah, essentially this is what you need to do for setting up your low poly mesh. Most of this is going to be what you've already done in Maya. I think the only tip I really needed to impart to you was to make sure that you, um, you make way for your wheel well so that when you model your geometry you aren't stuck with some crazy tessellation because you didn't account for the wheel well. So hopefully this gives you kind of a good idea on how to start. Everything else, um, well, I guess we could talk about the wheels real quick. That might be that might be helpful. So these wheels are pretty, pretty cool. Um, you're gonna want to go with a base shape first and worry about the tire tread later. Like on a high poly you might want to model in some tread and we can talk about that in class for just modeling um, for your normal map. But for the wheel itself, I mean, it's pretty pretty simple. Let's go ahead and uh, create a cylinder. I can't see it very well, so let's go into the side view. Go negative 90. I'm going to go ahead and drop the divisions to 12 again because 12 is really manageable. But you can always do more if you prefer. Um, this, when I modeled up to the point where the wheels were done, the axle was done, um, parts of the undercarriage, and I mean the undercarriage on this was really simple. I'm just going to mostly darken it out. I'm not going to be paying attention to all the little intricate details underneath. Um, but the bumper and the crank and stuff, I mean even with all that, I was just barely over a thousand polys and the poly limit on this assignment is like 3,000 I think for a or simple object. So I mean you can go a little crazier with the allowance based on how the rest of the vehicle is coming out. And of course if you have a more complex video via ugh, complex vehicle you get more to work with. Okay. Right. So what I'm gonna do here is uh, I'm gonna go in and grab these grab this cylinder and I'm going to activate my insert edge loop tool and chop it in half because instead of having to model oh no I don't want to do that change my mind again I am very fickle today I'm just gonna go in and grab these faces another way I could grab faces is just use this uh, paint select tool and just grab them all in one go so I'm gonna go ahead and shift right click extrude face and bring that in. Press G to repeat. And this time I'm going to go in and I'm going to push the tire in because that's what's happening on the reference. Make sure it's not going so far in that it pops out the other side. Press G again. Press G again. And this time, bring it out and scale it. Oops. Scale it in. There we go. Got a nice little wheel. And remember, it does not matter how it looks on the back. We're not going to be looking at the back. And if you want to save faces and kind of make this some nice quads, you can go in and grab every other edge. This was an even number. Delete, and these are quads. They look like triangles, but one, two, three, four. We're now dealing with quads. And you do the same on the back. All right, never mind. I'm just going to go ahead and do this. There. So quads again. And there's your tire. So, I mean, um, 
if you have any questions about any specific aspect, I'd make the mirrors a separate object, the bumper a separate object, or both bumpers separate objects, um, the chassis its own object. It doesn't have to open up or close. You don't have to model the interior of the vehicle. There's a lot a dirty windshield can hide. It's just mostly worrying about the, the mesh itself. So try your best to get this low poly knocked out. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all on Friday. Remember that the uh, milestone is going to be this Saturday. So if you run any trouble, I can stay late on Friday for tutoring. And also class period will be dedicated to working on this project. All right, take care.